Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to be making a Bob Bolly rayon shirt, and you will find the link for it down below in the description box. For this project, I left it buttoned up, and I turned it inside out, and I centered the shirt, using the sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. That footage was basically just the back of my head, so I decided to omit it. Now I'm just going to simply accordion fold it, pleat it, whatever you'd like to call it, I'd say these pleats are, I don't know, a little over an inch tall, inch and a half tall. Nice, big, chunky pleats. Next, I'm going to simply secure it by using rubber bands, and these are my second favorite rubber bands. You could use kite string, or you could use sinew if you wanted to create white lines. I don't want any white lines on this project. It really is just a matter of preference. Using things like kite string, it doesn't show skill level. I don't want you to feel like, oh, I use rubber bands, I'm not a good tie dyer. No, it just, like I said, it simply is a matter of preference. I like things to be quick and easy. Also, I really like the fact that I can reuse my rubber bands over and over again. With kite string, I have to cut it and throw it away. That little flap of fabric that I'm wrestling with it's like a little extra piece of fabric that runs along the button area. I don't know what you would call that. I'm sure it has a technical name if you're a seamstress. Um, I just know that it helps like the button area lay nice and flat. You probably don't have to worry about that, but I'm quite particular and I try to always make the pleats and everything line up as perfectly as I possibly can. Now this fabric down here is a lot thinner, so I'm using the smaller rubber bands, my baby hair rubber bands. You can pick them up just about anywhere, but I do have links for both of these rubber bands down in the description box, along with everything else that I use for tie-dye, so make sure that you check that out. It's a really good resource, um, and then that way you don't have to ask questions like, where did I get that? If you just check down in there, Everything is there, and if it's not, then reach out to me and I will try to help you find what you're looking for. I went into my little bucket of tricks and I got a smaller, tighter rubber band just to sort of pinch the end shut a little bit. It wasn't necessary to do, but I just wanted to. And the project has become too long for the rack that I wanna use, so I just fold the sleeves back and then lightly secure it with a rubber band. And remember that I did this, so at the end, at the reveal, when I talk about it, if you wanna do this step for yourself, you'll know what it looks like when you do it. Now I need to create some type of an ice barrier. This project is too tall for my silicone cake molds, so I'm going to make my ice barrier out of foil. And I like to use the foil that you can get at Costco. It's extra thick and heavy duty, and it holds up really well. Now it's time for the fun part, and my favorite part. We get to add the dye. So I reached out to you guys on Facebook in the group and asked for suggestions, and the consensus pretty much was go with beachy colors, and that's kind of where I wanted to go with it. You guys had a lot of wonderful suggestions and you shared your photographs with me. I did turn commenting off on that particular post because after seeing a few of your examples, I decided on exactly what I was going to do. So I'm going with the blues and the greens because like I said, I want that beachy vibe. This shirt is that light, flowy, rayon, cool. And when I'm making it in my mind, I'm picturing a guy walking down the beach with his lovely lady wearing his breezy Tommy Bahama style shirt. For my setup, I'm using a rack that I got at Walmart. I got it over in the kitchen department and I took the legs off of it. So this rack has a little lip on it and the tote that it's sitting in also has a little lip on it. So I just locked that 
lip into the lip and that way the rack isn't going to go anywhere. So this is on a very slight incline. And where I had the shirt folded in half, like where the buttons are, that is up at the top of the incline. So think of it, it's folded in half, then where the buttons are, and it's going to flow down towards the sleeves, like towards the underarm of the shirt. I'm going with Glacier Blue for this project. Knowing that it's not a great color for ice dyeing, it's one of those colors that has a tendency to disappear. So I'm going really heavy handed with it. And then the next color is Green Lantern, and that is a Dharma special order dye. And if you're interested in getting special order dyes in smaller quantities, you wanna head over to the Facebook group, Tie Dye Supplies Marketplace. I personally get my dye from Kathy Sprague but I think everybody in that group is a pretty good seller. And there is a link down below for that group in the description box. Next, I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. I'm going to be pushing a lot of water through the project via the melting ice, so I wanna make sure that pH stays up around 10.5 to 11. Now I'm using ice cube tray ice cubes instead of my nugget ice machine, and the only reason for that is because my machine was empty. I had been making a lot of projects that day, and I didn't wanna wait, so I just went for the ice cube trays. Ice is ice, and I suppose it depends on what you're doing, but I have an obsession with ice cubes and I have them in all shapes and sizes and you know you just go with what you've got. I made my ice barrier just a little bit too small. It's really tight around the project. So what I did is I placed an ice cube outside the foil up at the very top. I know most of it's going to just melt down into the tote, but I'm hoping that it will sort of melt and flow down through the fabric. The moral to the story of this one is make your ice barrier just a little bit larger. That way you're able to get some ice up and around the fabric. It's now the next morning and I've come to check on it. It did pretty good. A lot of the dye dissolved really well and it has decent saturation. However, there are some areas that are undersaturated and if you notice, the back is just pretty much all one color, like a light turquoise, which I could stop right here, but I want more definition to my colors. So I'm going to repeat the process on the back side that I did on the front side. Now this is where it comes in really handy if you record yourself or if you take notes or take photographs, you can go back and look because by morning, I had no idea where my dye placement was. So I was able to watch what I had done yesterday and make it really easy to repeat the process. You know, when you do a lot of projects, you can't remember everything. And I try to leave my dye set up in my basket exactly how I did it but you can't always count on that. And sometimes when the colors run together, you can't always tell where one started and one stopped. So that's my advice for the day. Take notes, take pictures, it's very helpful. And also, if you take photographs, it makes it really easy when sharing in the Facebook group, Belladonna Dyes Community Tie Dye Group. That way when people ask you questions like, how did you do that? Well, you can just show them pictures. I just checked and it looks like fall starts on September 22nd, which is one day before my birthday. Woohoo! So did everybody have a good summer? Did anybody get to go and do anything special? You know, we've been kind of locked down for the last couple of summers, right? So it was nice to have a little bit of freedom and feel normal again. I didn't do anything. I stayed close to home. I work full time and then I had the garden, which after watering the garden for two hours a day and working, I really didn't feel like I had a lot of time for tie-dye, like I like to. So 
as much as I love the garden and I'll be sad to see it go, I'm kind of relieved. And also I had to move into the house for tie dyeing because it's been so incredibly hot. So I've been working on moving my stuff all back out to the sun porch area and getting creative again and just being back in the area where I feel comfortable. I do not like to tie dye over carpet. It just, it puts like a lot of added stress to it. So anyways, I hope you guys all had a wonderful summer and thanks for being regular watchers. I sure do appreciate all of you. It's recommended that you let your project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours after the ice melts. I came back and checked it after the nugget ice had melted and it looked great. I did not need to add a second layer of ice, so I just set it aside and I let it batch for the full 48 hours. Now it's time for the rinse out. You want to start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon. Kirilon is a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener that I also get from Dharma. And yes, the links are down below in the description box. It just makes it easy for you to find. Now, when you're working with rayon and washing it, it's best to hand wash it. But for the tie dye process, I find that machine washing is necessary. So I put it inside of a garment bag. Maybe it's not a garment bag, a linen bag the mesh bag that you can get from anywhere. If you tear a hole in your project during the dyeing process, Dharma Trading Company is not going to help you. And then I let the project air dry and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our Bob Bali shirt after I let it air dry and then I ironed it and I think it turned out really pretty. At first, I was a little bit like, oh, maybe it's too dark, but after I ironed it, it really started to grow on me because I wanted a masculine shirt, but I wanted it to be beachy. You know, it's a little bit dark, but I think it shows the pattern and gives it some definition. And I like the color combination. The blueberry turned out to be a little bit more navy than what I was anticipating in my mind but I like it because I feel like it gives it some definition. Now in this photograph, this is where I folded the sleeve over. So you see that green line, that's the green lantern. Look at the color flows. So from the left of the screen, they're flowing towards the right. And then from the end of the sleeve on the right, they're flowing in towards the left. It switched the flows. And I think it made a pretty cool effect. Now these shots are the close up and I just think that all of the colors work really well together. The emerald green really split down sort of like into a, like a chartreuse, kind of like a lime pop color. And I like that because it gives um, just some brightness to it. And then the glacier blue, it looks really pretty. So overall, I'm super pleased with this shirt. It held up really well to the dyeing process. I would definitely order these shirts again. So what do you guys think? please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie dyeing.